Okay, this is Steve Sauter, standing in the Wilder Observatory, a little known place on Snell Street on the Amherst College campus. What I like about this place is that it's hidden, that most students don't even know it exists. Um, Wilder Hill, the hill we're standing on, is the second highest hill in Amherst. You wouldn't know it uh, with all the dense forests that are right up against the observatory. But the observatory was built here in 1903 on this bare top second highest hill of Amherst, um, built under the direction uh, and the, uh, the guidance and the planning of a guy named David Todd, uh, the first astronomer hired here at Amherst College. And it's a wonderful story because David Todd actually came here, um, was hired under false pretenses by the then President Seeley, who promised David Todd, an astronomer working at the um, uh, uh, Naval Observatory down in Washington, that he could come up, leave his job as essentially a junior astronomer, come to Amherst College, be the first and only astronomer here, and that he would be able to build a world-class observatory, unlimited funds. And so David Todd left his uh, uh, observatory job, came up here, and then President Seeley told him that in fact he had no money. There were no donors lined up, but he wouldn't work on it. But it wasn't going to be for another 20 years before uh, David Todd got the money uh, to build this observatory. And he set out uh, trying to build the world's greatest observatory. So he found the world's greatest uh, telescope maker, was Alvin Clark. Alvin Clark has Western Massachusetts roots. He was uh, born and raised in Ashfield, uh, not very far away, the town that I live in, in fact. And uh, Alvin Clark discovered fairly early on that he could make a great deal of money by making telescopes. Uh, and so this telescope is an Alvin Clark 18-inch refractor. And the 18-inch refractor means the lens, the front lens, as an objective telescope, when you the light goes through a, a lens in the front and all the way down to a set of eyepieces on the back, that front objective lens is 18 inches in diameter. It sounds small, but in fact that's an extraordinarily large lens and is amazingly heavy. So we're standing here in the Wilder Observatory and the top of the dome above our heads is more than 30 feet above us. And the telescope weighs many tons. It's sitting on an enormous cast iron pier. Um, the telescope itself is about 24 feet long. Uh, it's quite remarkable looking. In 1903, when the observatory was completed, it was one of the largest telescopes in the world. But the telescope itself, the telescope itself is a remarkable instrument. This, is a, this lens, this 18-inch objective, is hand-figured. That means it's hand-rubbed using... Uh, um, uh, grit is how you polish a lens, a glass lens, and you do this uh, over, it took 18 months to build this objective, 18 months of hand fingering and testing. I think the price on the telescope that Amherst paid was about $12,000 complete. 5000 of that was the lens itself, that front objective lens. Um, it remains in working condition, uh, beautiful views of the planets of the moon. Uh, with this thing, uh, it's um, almost just as it was in 1903. It's uh, really uh, only been mechanized recently, um, and it's actually quite difficult to use. But it's a delightful, uh, it's a delightful thing. And what it stands is it stands as one of the great um, achievements of uh, engineering and science of that first part of the 20th century. Uh, they no longer make telescopes like this. Um, almost all telescopes that astronomers use are, in fact. Um, not the visible wavelengths. They're using radio telescopes and infrared telescopes and x-ray telescopes. Uh, and you can't build refractor telescopes, telescopes with huge glass objective lenses bigger than 40 inches. At least you couldn't back that in the 1910s and 20s and 30s because they became too heavy, too big, too unwieldy. Uh, and so this telescope remains in the top 50 refractors in the world. It's uh, sort of wonderful. These days, it's used almost entirely by the Amherst Area Amateur Astronomers Association, who invite the public to come in here. And over the last 20 years, they've had perhaps as many as 15 to 20,000 uh, members of the public come in and observe through the telescope.